Greetings ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another episode of Garage Tales. Today we're working on a Daytona again and I'd like to get the engine serviced. So some of you may have noticed that it's missing the radiator so we're gonna have that back in place. Vacuum test the cooling system and fill it. Probably flush it a few times then fill it. Replace all the vacuum hoses, balance the throttle bodies, sort out the starter, maybe loop the, the, the throttle cables and adjust them and a few, a few other small bits. But before we do any of that, I want to see what the valve clearance looks like, because I might need to order some new shims. So let's get to it. So I already have the air box off, plugs are out, rear wheel is jacked up so I can use that to turn the engine over. I've cleaned it up a bit and blowed all the debris away with some compressed air, so I make sure nothing falls into the engine when I take the cover off. And I'm just going to do these 8 bolts, first by hand and then use a power tool, and take the cover off. Let's see what that looks like. Another thing I should mention is that this cam cover has a bolt release sequence. So you, you don't just undo all the bolts, you sort of loosen them up one at a time in a certain sequence. And in this case is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 or thereabouts. The, the idea is to sort of spread it. You don't start from one end and go to the other, you do it sort of from the middle outwards. So let's get on with that. Now you can kind of tell when things haven't been apart in a very long time and this is definitely the case. Based on the lack of any sort of maintenance history we can assume that this may have never been done. I've got the cover off and it actually looks fairly clean in there so I'm quite happy with that. I've got a Triumph valve clearance sheet, I'm going to use to write down all my measurements. And I've got the set of feeler gauges. Obviously check your manual for the recommended valve clearance but in this case it's 0.1 to 0.15 for the intake and 0.15 to 0.2 for the exhaust. So let's get cracking. So I checked the exhaust valves on cylinder number one and they're spot on, so that's a great start. Now we're going to check the intake valves on cylinder number three. So there we go, I've checked all the clearances and they're all fine apart from cylinder number one on the intake side. Both valves are too tight. So I'm going to have to take the shims out, measure them, see what the correct thickness should be, and uh, get some replacements. So for removing valve shims without taking the cams off, you can make, or you could probably still buy, a special tool that looks something like this. And it's quite nice, you just bolt it on, you turn the wheel until the cam lobes push the valves down, you then put these two little studs on to hold the valves down, while you rotate the, the camshafts again until the lobes face up, so you've got enough room there to pull the valve shims off. Now if you can't find one of these and you actually want to make one, the first one I've made is just a very simple bent piece of aluminium. So they're not complicated to make and this one worked fine for a few times. So yeah, let's give this one a try. So I've turned both my valves with the little cutout in the bucket facing this way so that'll help me get something in there and pop the shim out. There we go. Probably doesn't look like it from the angle you're looking at, but um, we've actually got quite a lot of space there to work with. So in theory, you're only supposed to use plastic or soft uh, soft tools to try to pry the shims out, but that never really worked for me. Obviously having a small, only that narrow 
plastic tool will just break trying to pop the seal out. You can use compressed air right in that notch and that'll often pop the seal out. But if you use a pick like this, which I often use, only use it on the side of the shim, never on the faces of it. So let's see how this works. There we go, we got one shim out. And the second one. So I've got my two shims out, I've got a micrometer, I'm gonna measure them. I've got the measured values, the me measured clearance values. And based on that, I can work out what the desired shim thickness is. And I also have a box of spare shims, and hopefully I can find the right thickness in here. Then we don't have to order anything, we're gonna have the job done today. Please excuse the mess, as you can see I'm filming several videos at one time. As I'm waiting for parts I might as well do something else. So I've got the two clearances. We've got the 0 on one, I couldn't get any filler gauge in. And 0 0.05 on the other. So let's see what the shim thickness is. So I've got several measurements on this and it's all even. And it's 2.69. This is 2.7. And now what I need to work out is the desired thickness of the shim to obtain the correct clearance. So for that I need thinner shims to increase the gap. So this would be 2.55 and this one 2.65. So there we go. I managed to find two shims with the correct thickness in my box of spares. I've already fitted them. I didn't want to bore you with the process because this wasn't really intended to be a how-to video. But if you want a how-to, might do one in the future if there's enough requests. So I've got the valve clearance all done. They're all spot on. I gave the cover a good clean. And I'm just gonna pop it on, torque all the bolts, and we're done with this job and move to the next one. Before I put the cover on though, I wanna put the spark plugs back in just to prevent anything from falling into the cylinders. So I'm gonna do that, just pop them in, and then we can get on with the next job. So I've just put a bit of silicon in the groove to hold the gasket in place and hopefully prevent any leaks. Ideally you'd put a new gasket on but in this case I'm just going to reuse the old one. Also put a bit of silicon in the corners here as this is a usual leak path. So I put a bit of silicon under each bolt head just to make sure it doesn't leak and I torqued them up to 10 Newton meters in the pattern described in the manual but sadly I couldn't fit my torque wrench on the two bolts on the right side so I had to use the calibrated torque wrench in my elbow.
top of the engine done. I'm still waiting for some bits for the starter. I've already taken that apart and cleaned it, waiting for some new bearings and brushes. But although I've already taken that apart and filmed it, you're gonna see it later in this video, so it's not broken up in two pieces. Some of you may have noticed there's no radiator on this bike. The radiator's off, we're gonna get a replacement pad for that. And it also has a broken tab, which I'm gonna try to solder back on. But before I do any of that, it's a bit late tonight, so I'm gonna try to do one more job which is replacing the exhaust studs. They're quite corroded, as you'll see in a minute, and the owner of this bike, Chris, has bought some new stainless steel ones. So we're gonna try to replace those, and hopefully we won't get too much drama. Let's see how it goes. I managed to get all the studs out, luckily none of them break and I didn't even have to use heat on them because that might damage the finish on the engine. So now it's time to put the new ones in. So we've got this set of stainless steel ones, we're gonna put them in. Now the manual doesn't specify a torque for the stud itself, but you do have to thread it in enough. You, may, you have to make sure you've got enough thread engagement there. And then the nuts, tighten all of them to 8 newton meters. And then once you're done with that, go another step up to 12 newton meters. So let's do that. So I'm just going to put a bit of copper grease on all the studs to make sure in case we ever need to remove them again they'll come out easily. So for thread engagement I'd like to get them in at least 10 turns. So they all went in about 15 turns, which is great. I 
ideally you wouldn't use any extensions on the torque wrench, but in this case we don't really have a choice. And that's it, the exhaust manifold studs are all done.